Okay, this is 516 white clay from Pottery Supply House, and I've been doing chattering on on pieces mostly in the speckled clay and the darker red clay from the Laguna. Um, so I wanted to try some um, using white clay. The reason I've been using all the other clays is they look better with my glazes, because I have mostly dark glazes um, that are not very transparent. They're, they've got tin in them and other opacifiers blue tile and so um, so I had to mix up some glazes um, to actually use um, uh, to enhance the uh, chattering effect my studio is not set up to, to be able to see through the glaze basically so I've got a few glazes that will do that the folk art white seems to work well my apple green is doing a decent job um, and my uh, variegated blue and bright blue seem to show up a little bit of the chattering. The variegated blue has to be applied thin, but I have the uh, blue, green, copper, red, which is great, uh, and now I have that chun green, which is great as well. I, I kind of wish I had a, um, a pale, transparent blue too, but maybe next year. I just don't have the room to keep making new glazes even though I have a massive studio. But, you know, I have about 25 to 30 five gallon buckets around the place. Myself a line here to separate the two areas. And I'm going to concentrate on trying to create some pattern effects. All right, so not too much off. It's hard to stop. <coughs> this, is a curved edge and it's angled away from the cut so it doesn't dig in as much so let's see what this does if i keep it going slowly and um have the angle to go in and see what we, we actually get as a as a pattern type of thing jumped a little bit there. I think you can see that. That's definitely a pattern rather than a texture. So let me just trim that off and see what we get again. I have my pebble here, which can really get rid of any texture that's already on there that might influence the next set of mold. So look, what other round nib tool do I have here? Okay, this one, that one was moving down a little bit. So this one is pretty much flat on. So let's see if I can control it a little bit. Oh, too fast. I'm trying to get patterns, remember. Is a pattern, not a texture. So let's give that one a break for a second and go to a square end one. I can give myself a different framing texture up here, go fast to get a texture. Oh, yeah, now we have a texture there. Do the same here, I think. What do we get 
there. Oh yeah, now we got, wow, I like it. Let's see, where's my favorite trimming tool? Okay, this is an R2 from Kemper. This is just able to do some fine detail trimming. So I'm gonna separate these areas. Lightly drag it over to knock any debris away. What do we have? Square end, flat on. Let's see if I can find that. Okay, this is the square end, flat on. And I'm going to see what kind of mark we get. If I go slow <coughs> down here and see what kind of a drag mark we get as it cuts in, I have to get quite a deep angle. Certainly makes a lot of noise, doesn't it? Look at that though. Let's see if you can get close up down there. See all of them. Okay, have a closer look at this is pretty intense. I mean I've covered every bit of the piece and it's nice to keep some areas smooth when you're doing chattering. Okay, I'm using the square end with the cut away from you, and I'm going to try the angled one slowly. fed up of that wow sound. Anyway, let's get rid of that foot problem there. They're beginning to look like patterns that you would see in textiles or in paper marbling. I'm not sure if you agree with that or not. That's, I'm just, that is so nice, I want it to show up and not be distracted with other things on the pot. So let's, let's finish it up there. Let's get you a bit closer in. Okay, I've got three curved tools here. One of them is flat on. This one's angled towards the cut. And this one is angled away from the cut. But I'm gonna concentrate on using the ends and I'm gonna try three different um, bands to see what the difference is between those.
Ah, uh, yeah, there's a difference. And it's the same as you would expect. It's flat on or it's the cut is at a slight angle each time. But you get lots of little triangles. And it, because of the angle, it's it's trying to pull in one direction a little more than you want it to, maybe. Um, let's go with the last one. And this is the one that's angled in the, it, it cuts deep sideways into the piece, but it's, um, so it's an angle across. Let's just do a little one and see what happens here. And it's the exact opposite of that one. These ones are angled in. So yeah, it's a it's an interesting little experiment with different little triangles going in different directions. But it, it it's so much like a you know knitting. I mean the texture you see with knitting. But let me tighten these up a little bit. you can see get you close in there you can see the different directions the triangles are going in now I'm going to try the same experiment with the three flat tools and see what we get Oh yeah, they're like little triangles. If you are really careful about timing, I guess, because they were closing together there, I was going too slow down a little bit, but there was the things going faster, so you start to get more triangle separation. The angle should be different again. Maybe I'll try and go a bit faster this time so we keep separate triangles. Kind of a deep angle. They're like Christmas trees upside down. I don't want to go too down because it gets thin around this area here. Well, that's a lighter cut. It's a much more quieter mark there. But I'm learning. It's on the outside, so it won't be as visible. I think that's already pretty much defined there. I'll go up there and make sure there's no marks on the foot. And then down here just to get Oh, wait a minute, I was just trimming into the decoration. Let's have a little double go with that one. Yep, it's a softer cut, again. Not too deep either, because I know it's thin at the top of my balls there. Yeah, we've given ourselves that sort of 
wave kind of texture thing there. Let's get rid of this. The piece is a little softer, this one. Let's get a bit more of a texture here. Oh no, let's go with the just triangles. Just a few dashes and dots. Do a little more there. I'm going to use the chuck again that I can actually then just place the balls in and out. I'm going to try to get it to judge up going up the piece like this. That's a soft texture. I didn't want to press hard because they're thin. So that'll go just in this location. Not too much either because I know it's thin. This is the one that looks a bit like Sanskrit writing, I think. see that. I can see a ripple effect on the inside of this bowl, so we've got to be very careful doing anything to it. So I'm just going to do something just maybe uh, well, it's a little thicker just here I think. Yep, that's a nice little separation. And actually, I'll just do one more thing. I wonder if I can go up here carefully. Yeah, nice little ripple effect there. Important too. So you just have to experiment, with, but I think it, need, it shouldn't be too dry and it shouldn't be too soft either. And remember on the inside of a bowl, you don't want to have too textural anyway because the glaze or well, the texture holds uh, food residue. This is a little curve end tool. Lots of little triangles on their side. Tool right in that to give myself a, a little framing thing. <laughs>
This is, I think this is a makeup brush. <laughs> I'm not sure. But... This is the flat edge tool that cuts away from you. So it gives you that kind of ripple effect all the way around. I'm just going to use the curve one and give myself a little border at the bottom. Yeah, I think that's enough on that. I'm trying to stay subtle on the insides. It's got a nice ripple effect there. Let's see if I can get something up here. Oh, how thin my pieces are. Okay, well, it is going to be fun to do the glazing on these. I'm going to have to try to get some a transparent blue as well, though. I really would like to see some of these in transparent blue. Okay, this is a dark clay body number 80 from Laguna. <clears throat> and um, I'm going to try something with this tool that I just got from Bill Wright. Um, we're going to do a, a sideways chatter. Let's see if I can get it right. Get, get the angle just right, I think. Do it here. Oop, I don't want to hold it a bit more tight than that. Pretty good. Oh yeah, and you hope you can see what's going on there. I need to correct my foot a little bit, which is why I'm glad I left it quite thick. The chattering was going way up onto the foot. So I'll get rid of those marks. But that is a very nice mark. Actually, I think if I make a line here, it's, it seems like there's no end to what you can do. And I could try the just the end part. That's what that looks like. Oh, it's a little bit less, more subtle. I think I'll leave it because this this is aggressive. That just needs to be like. Let's try this down here. Now we've got to be careful here because this is thin where the ball is there.
because I've got a light above me, you might be able to see this quite nicely. There you go. Yeah, so uh, I think that for the outside, I don't know whether to do anything on the inside. Yeah, I don't see any marks on the inside. Bring with that because it's so thin here, if it would have marked the inside. But it would be nice to have something on the inside, so I wonder if I could do that. Tool, my bolt. My, this is a chuck that I made. Okay, so I should give myself a line to work to. I'm try and stick within those two lines. Do something light because I don't want to. Um... Get my brush and brush down a little bit so you can And you've got to leave some smooth areas. Identifying your area of shattering. This is a different tool. Um, let's see what this one does. actually gave a nice texture. This is a tool I think that um, Bill Wright made so I could try it. Uh, it's a funny one. It's, it's got a it, it's, it's a longer sort of stripe down there. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is just do the end up there. See what that did. Yeah, that's a kind of a nice edge to that chattering area. Right down there too. Yep, that's a nice edge too. So I don't think I'll do any more on the inside of this one. I'll do another one like that. So we'll give a double line here. I like having edges for basically just kind of defining where I want to work. Gives me something to aim to. If I'm doing a painting area, painted area, it's nice to have an edge to it too. I'll go down a bit lower there. Alright, so what this one would do. This is angled. This one is angled to cut into towards the clay, and this one's angled away. So I'm not sure if it will do a different mark or not, but let's see. Easier to control this one that's angled away from the cut so I think that was a little easier to use but it has a very nice look to it it's not I'm 67 years old 68 in January and I'm still excited about all this stuff but that's a nice texture I think that should record it nicely 
Now I'm going to trim the outside of these two. So now I'm going to just clean up my edges where the tool might have caught other areas. And that's it. So going from texture, which is more this one, to pattern down here. So we don't over, but this bowl is just so, so overdone with that. But it's nice. It'll be interesting because it gives you plenty to play with with glazes. That's what I'm looking forward to. That's what it looks like. I just wanted to highlight this uh, in a video because I'm trying something totally experimental. I sprayed these handles with PAM, which is that spray oil that you put on french fries to cook them. Because the handles, when I do that rope handle, will often crack because they dry really quickly, whereas the pot is still softer. Um, and so I've sprayed PAM on these to see whether I can let them dry naturally. I usually clear, uh, cover them with saran wrap or cling film. This is a little update on the experiment I've been doing with these handles. Uh, I sprayed them with uh, PAM cooking oil uh, to slow down the drying of just the handle area because these pieces tend to crack, the, ha the, cran the handles crack because they dry so fast and then the rest of the pot is still got some softness to it. Um, and uh, I used to cover them in cling film, as I said earlier. But now I'm just spraying with Pam and I've been waiting and waiting. And now I just checked it and it's thoroughly dry, dry enough to trim. Um, and the handles haven't cracked. And this is a porcelain style clay. And it's 516 from uh, Pottery Supply House, which is very smooth white stoneware. But this piece, um, I took an order for a bunch of coffee mugs for a place that sells coffee. Um, so I sprigged the piece on the front. This was quite a hard piece to glaze because uh, it's Randy's Red, so I had to glaze it twice to get the red to work. It sort of goes brown if it's on too thin. Um, and some fluting on there as well, but they turned out really nice. So that's uh, another hint for get in touch with your local coffee place and see whether you can make them some mugs for them to use in the, in the actual uh, barn. This is the barn in Mahone Bay if you want to look it up on the website. I have some leftover trays from the fish that I did. Um, so just a few pieces. 
um, just with some little leftover pieces of clay basically um, and I'm not sure if you can see in there but there's a texture like I was doing on the fish but I have this texture that I thought that folk art white glaze with a bit of my apple green would look really good and it does so it's just a little leftover bit of clay somebody will probably buy that for Christmas I would think and there's an apple green piece all on its own uh, I think on the edge I dipped a little bit of oatmeal uh, so it made it a bit deeper green but you can see there's a texture in there as well there you go I don't do these very often um, but if I've got bits of leftover clay rather than recycle which takes time why not just quickly slump all the tray These are the old kiln shelves I have for this kiln, but um, look at that for an apple green teapot. Isn't that sweet? And there is some of the chattering on the bottom. I have to hold it still for a second. I forget when it's moving, you don't see the detail. But that's one of the first pieces I think I did with the chattering. I've been doing a lot of it, and that's just fluting using my trimming tool on the top there. But that apple green turned out really good. Let's see what the lid looks like. And here's a live test. Does it still fit? Yes, it does. Good. I'm always disappointed when they don't fit. And that is one of the teapots. It's not big enough to really do it, but it's nice if you've got that so you don't have to put your hands underneath there. You can actually hold it with that when you're pouring and then use your thumb to stop the lid falling out. I have 17 teapots in this batch of teapots that I just made. I treated myself. This is one of the winter pieces, Icelandic type pieces that I do. Same style of teapot with oatmeal, mouse gray, and variegated blue on the bottom. There's some more of that texture. Glaze kind of ran down on this one. So you can see a little bit of the texture. The glaze always runs down when you use variegated blue. Be wary of variegated blue. It does run a lot, but it's so nice. Another nice teapot. Never used this glaze before, but somebody customer asked me for purple. And so I thought, well, let's search for a purple. And I did a Chun Green. And it's got oatmeal over the top there and on the bottom as well. So where the oatmeal goes on, it runs down and makes it a bit darker. That is a nice green. I like that. This is interesting. It's got some really strange glaze effects on it. Like, well, maybe it's a little bit of crawling that then melts over again but it's nice. And this is my matte turquoise going my yellow over the top. And the matte turquoise doesn't like to be overglazed. Oh, and then there's some blue on the bottom too. And the chattering is there too. And here's the other one for this lid. All the lids fit perfect. Is the green, apple green, bright blue and oatmeal. So it's more the landscape. No chatting, I don't think on this one. Oh, there was, but the glaze. Oh, you can see it, yeah. 